What if I told you that the length of two fingers on your hand could reveal secrets about your body you never thought possible? Not palm reading, not superstition, but real science, anchored in embryology, hormones, and your genetic blueprint. From performance and risk-taking to athletic ability, even sexual biology, your fingers might be telling a story that started before you were even born. In today's video, I'm going to break down the fascinating link between a little-known anatomical feature, your digit ratio, and its connection to one of the most discussed, debated, and misunderstood topics in men's health. And let me be clear, this is not just locker room talk. This is grounded in peer-reviewed research, medical science, and the latest data. So don't skip, because by the time this video is over, you'll never look at your hand the same way again. Hi, I'm Dr. Katherine Anderson. I'm a urologist specializing in genitourinary trauma and reconstruction at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Okay, so, have you ever looked at your right hand and noticed the length of your fingers? Specifically, the second and fourth digits? Yes. The index and ring fingers can tell us more than you might think. In fact, they might carry clues about your early hormonal environment. And even, believe it or not, about certain aspects of your physiology that developed long before you were born. Let's begin with a simple observation. Take a moment to look at your right hand Compare your index finger, that's your second digit, to your ring finger, your fourth digit. Is your index finger longer, shorter, or roughly the same length as your ring finger? What you've just examined is called the 2D to 4D ratio, and much of its significance lies in what it says about your exposure to certain sex hormones, primarily testosterone and estradiol, during a very specific period of your fetal development between the 10th and 15th week of gestation. Yes, your hormones were already interacting with your genes long before you took your first breath. Here's the science behind it. A lower 2D to 4D ratio, when your ring finger is significantly longer than your index finger, suggests higher exposure to testosterone in utero. Conversely, a higher ratio, where the index finger is longer, is linked with comparatively lower testosterone exposure during the same early developmental period. Generally speaking, most biological males tend to have a lower 2D to 4D ratio, while biological females tend to show a higher one. However, this isn't absolute. There are always exceptions due to genetic, hormonal, or environmental influences. But what's striking is the way this ratio correlates with a variety of traits, including some that are deeply tied to masculinity, competitiveness, and even physical attributes. Now, let's address the topic that made you click on this video in the first place. Could this simple finger ratio predict penile length? Surprisingly, there is scientific data suggesting the answer might be yes, at least to a certain extent. A foundational 2011 study published in the Asian Journal of Andrology by researchers in South Korea investigated this exact question. The research involved around 150 adult men with a median age of around 60 who were undergoing urological surgery. Because these men were under general anesthesia, researchers were able to obtain accurate, relaxed measurements of both flaccid and stretched penile lengths. What did they find? There was indeed a statistically significant correlation between lower 2D to 4D ratios and longer stretched penile length. In simpler terms, Men who had longer ring fingers relative to their index fingers tended to also have longer penises. The overarching conclusion was that higher fetal testosterone might simultaneously influence both finger development and the early development of male genitalia. But we need to be cautious in interpreting data like this. While the correlation exists, it is not absolute. Genetics and hormonal environments interact in complex ways. Other factors, like adult hormone levels, genetic mutations, overall health, and even environmental endocrine disruptors, also play critical roles in determining outcomes like penis size. Still, the digit ratio has surfaced again and again in science, not just in relation to physical traits, but also in cognitive and behavioral domains. Let me explain. Please pay attention. 
A broad body of research has been investigating links between low digit ratios and traits such as athletic ability, spatial intelligence, musical aptitude, and even professional risk taking behaviors. A lower 2D to 4D ratio has been associated with better performance among competitive athletes and has also been noted in more aggressive financial decision makers, such as high frequency stock traders. Why might this be the case? Well, the same prenatal testosterone that influences finger length may also affect the development of certain neural structures, particularly in the frontal cortex and amygdala, areas of the brain associated with decision-making, aggression, and reward anticipation. This suggests these individuals may be biologically primed to take calculated risks, react decisively under pressure, and perform better in high-stakes environments. But before you start judging someone's personality or anatomy, based solely on their finger lengths? Let's talk about the limitations of such correlations. One light-hearted yet critical reminder comes from a piece published in the British Medical Journal's Christmas edition, a time when the journal traditionally publishes satirical or unusual content. The study, humorously titled Giving Science the Finger, looked at whether digit ratios could predict luck. In the study, participants chose cards from a deck to simulate games of chance. Results suggested that those with lower 2D to 4D ratios had a higher probability of drawing better poker hands. The article ended with an important note. Correlation doesn't imply causation. Just because a trait consistently appears alongside another doesn't mean one causes the other. This is vital in scientific interpretation. For example, there's a historical joke in statistics about how the number of storks in a European town is positively correlated with the number of babies born, purely because rural areas, where storks are common, also tend to have higher birth rates. So, back to finger lengths. Could they really be meaningful predictors of physiological and behavioral traits? Perhaps. But it's better to see them as biological clues, not definitive answers. They offer insights into our early hormonal environment, which may have downstream effects on numerous aspects of who we are. However, human development is shaped by a combination of genetics, hormones, environment, nutrition, and chance. That's why two people with similar finger ratios may be wildly different in other ways. And as for the claim that finger length can consistently predict penis size or sexual performance, the science supports some association, but not enough to treat it as fact. If anything, it gives us a new lens through which to appreciate the incredible complexity of our bodies. So. The next time you're sitting across the table from someone and sneak a glance at their hands, remember, underneath those digits lies a story written long ago in the quiet, hormonal ballet inside the womb. And while they may whisper hints of our biological past, only continued research can tell us how much of that story truly shapes our future. Now that you know how much your fingers might be saying about your biology, I've got a challenge for you. Take a look at your right hand, again. Is your index finger longer than your ring finger? Or is it the other way around? Maybe they're nearly the same? Whatever you see, I want to hear about it. Drop it in the comments below. Let's turn this into a live experiment. I'll be checking to see the most common finger types among viewers. And don't keep this fascinating info to yourself. Share this video with your friends, especially the ones with unusually long or short index fingers. Trust me, it'll spark some interesting conversations. Because if your fingers are telling a story, you might want to know what everyone else's are saying too. This is your Dr. Katie signing off. If you like what you see here, subscribe. Because if you don't, this might be the last time you see me with this kind of content pop up in your feed. And believe me, if you're curious about penal health, anatomy, or the science behind male biology, I've got a lot more coming your way. I'd love to share it with you, but you have to be here to get it. So click that subscribe button, hit the bell, and be part of this growing informed community. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.